In this video, we are going to learn how to use the options pattern in SP.NET Core. Basically, the idea is the following. We know that we can use configuration providers so that we don't have to hard code certain values in our c -sharp applications. For example, here we have a connection string, we have here a DB and Redis connection, and it is not a good idea to have this hard coded in our c -sharp code, but instead we should have it in configuration providers like a JSON file, an environment variable, and things like that. That is great because that allows us to change those values when we want, and also it allows us to have different values for different environments. Again, that is all cool. And typically, in order to retrieve these values from these configuration providers, we use the iConfiguration service. For example, here we have this app settings JSON, we have this connection string, and let's see that if we want to get this DB connection, we can come here to the program class, and we have this app map get, get connection string, we use the iConfiguration service, and then we say configuration, get section, connection strings, get value of type string, DB. And then in here we have that value. We can see that. Let's press Ctrl F5, let's come here to the HTTP file, and let's see that we have this URL here, which means that I can do a request to that endpoint. Let's send the request and let's see that indeed we have this is a connection string, which is the value that we have here. That is all great, but I don't like to have to hard code the section name, the key name here. There must be a better way and there is with the options pattern. But before that, if you want to learn more about how to build web APIs using SP.NET Core, buy my Udemy courses today. I have a course on minimal APIs with Entity Framework Core and another course about building web APIs using minimal APIs and also Dapper. In that course, we use store procedures. Link with a discount to these courses in the description of this video. Alright, so back to the tutorial. So in order to use the options pattern, we have three choices. The iOptions service, iOptions snapshot, and iOptions monitor. And in this video, we are going to learn about those three. So let's get started with the basics. The idea is that with the options pattern, instead of having to use these hard-coded strings here, we can use classes that will represent these values that then we can reuse in our code. Let's see that. Let's, for example, make a class that will represent these values that we have in this section, the DB and Redis connection. All right, so for that, I like to create a folder that will contain those classes. I'll call it configurations, and then I will right click on here and create a new class. I will say connection strings, and I call it connection strings because that is the name of the section. It is not mandatory to do it like this, but I like to follow this convention. So let's click on add, and in here, I like to put the name of the section that this class will be bind to. So let me say here, public const a string section. And then in here, I will put the name of the section, which is connection strings. So let me put this here. All right. So after that, I will put here two properties, one for each value. So here we will have DB, which is this value that we have here, this key, and then Redis. So let me say here, let me clone this and say Redis. Now, something else that I want to do is that I want to make these values required, which means that if they are not present in any configuration provider, then our application will not even start up. All right, so now let's configure this connection strings class. Let's come to the program class. Let me come up here after bar builder. I will say builder services, add options and I will say here the name of the class which is connection strings and then I will say here bind because I want to bind this class with a section of my configuration providers in this case to this connection string section but instead of hard coding that here I will use this value that I put in the class so let me say here builder configuration get section and I will say connection strings dot section and then in order for me to validate that these values that we have here are always present, I will say here, validate their annotations and then validate on a start. So if they are missing, the application will not be able to run. Now let's come here. I want to come here and I mentioned before that we have three options. We have I options. Let me say here, connection strings and then options. And let me bring this namespace. We have iOptions, we have iOptions snapshot, and also we have iOptions monitor. All right, so what is the difference? 
Let's start with the most simple one, I options. Let me say here, I options. I options basically allows us to retrieve a value from a configuration provider and keep that value in cache, which means that this is the most performant option. Let's see that. Let's come here. And instead of hard coding, connection strings and DB, let me just say options dot value dot and see how I can just simply say this strongly type options, which allows me to say DB or Redis or whatever. Let me say DB and let's see that this still works. Control F5 to run an application. Let's come here. And let's see that if I click on send request, we're going to get back this. But as I mentioned before, I options keep the value in cache, which means that if I come here and I update this update, let me save and let's see that in here, we get back the same value because again, I options keep the value in cache. And therefore, even if we update the value in a configuration provider, we're not going to get the latest value from I options. If that is what we want, if we want to always get the latest value, we have to use either iOptions snapshot or iOptions monitor. Let's see the difference between those two. First, I want to make another example. I want to come here. Let's come here. Let me remove this. This was just an example. I want to do the following. Let's see that here in the program class, in this default web API that I just created, we have this weather forecast, which returns five weather forecast instances, but I want this value to be changed whenever I want. Therefore, what we're going to do is that, yes, we're going to use the options pattern, but we're going to use iOcean snapshot to always get the latest value. Let's see that. Let's come here. Let me say here, API configurations. Let me put a comma here, weather forecast to return, and I will say five, for example. All right, so I will copy this. Let's come here. Let me create a new class class API configurations. Please notice that we can make a new class for each section that we have. So let me say API configurations. Let me say here prop required int and let me put here the name of the property. Let's say weather forecast to return. And then just like we did here with connection strings, let me copy this and paste it here. And let me put here the name of the section, which is API configurations. Now let's come here to the program class and let's come here. Let me configure this new class as an option. So let me come here and let me say API configurations and also API configurations here. As you can see, it is basically the same code. It is basically the same way. Now let's come here. Let's come to this endpoint and let me say here, instead of I options, I want to use I options snapshot because I want to always get the latest value, which may change in between one HTTP request and the other. So let me say here, I options a snapshot and let me say API configurations. I can name it option snapshot. And then let me say here, var weather forecast to return equal to option snapshot value where forecast to return and then let me put this here and let's say control f5 to compile my application let's come here let's see that indeed we get back five instances of the water forecast class and now if i come here and i change this for example to three let's save and let's see that i don't have to recompile my application let's come here same request. And as you can see, we only have three values here, which means that indeed iOptions snapshot allows us to always get the latest value. This is ideal in certain scenarios like this one in which we want to be able to change the value and have that change being picked up by the application immediately. But if this is a hot path, if this is a part of my application that I must run frequently, maybe this will affect the performance of my application because it have to look through the configuration providers and that can have a performance cost. So that is something that we must analyze before deciding whether we want to use iOptions or iOptions snapshot. Now the final option that we have is iOptions monitor. iOptions monitor allows us to not only always retrieve the current value that is in a configuration provider, but also allows us to a, be used in singletons and B, react to that change. Let's see that. As I just mentioned, I can use that class in a singleton. So let's create a job that will execute repeatedly. So let's come here, add new folder, jobs, and let me say right click, add class, recurring task. All right, let's say 
background service control dot implement abstract class i will say that this will execute every five seconds so while true let me say execute task all right and then await task delay time span from seconds five stopping token semicolon here all right so now let's say that what this class does is that it allows me to repeatedly send messages to my users but those messages can be either sms or email and i want to have that option to be changed in a configuration provider therefore what we're going to do is that we're going to come here to tab settings json and let me say here notifications notification type sms all right so let me put a comma here let's come here i want to create a new class so class notifications and let me say here the section and also the notification type property and now let's come back to the program class let's configure this option so let me come here and repeat this and let me say here notifications and also notifications now something that i said before is that we can use iOptions monitor in a singleton class now we can't use iOptions snapshot in a singleton class let's see that let's see that we can come here and let's pretend just for a moment that i want to say here i options a snapshot because i want to always get the latest value so let me say here notifications and options snapshots control lot i will not even continue because this will not work so let's come here let me configure my recurring task so let me say builder services at hosted service and let me say recurring task all right control f5 and let's see that our application will crash as you can see here we have an exception that is because again we can't use i options snapshot in a singleton class we could create a scope but we're not going to do that in this video what we can do is to say i options monitor which will do the same as i options snapshot that is that it can get the current value in a configuration provider but it can be used in singletons let's see that so i options monitor let me say options monitor let me delete this let me delete this and let me just do this again as an say field now let me say here bar notifications equal to options monitor current value and then in here i can write on the console for example the notification type is notifications notification type now let me press ctrl f5 to run my application and let's see that if we drag this over here we have sms sms every five seconds excellent and if i come here if i come here to tab settings json and i change this to email safe we're going to see that now we have email and then five seconds later we have email and so as you can see we're getting the latest value in a singleton class but something else that i mentioned before is that iOptions monitor allows us to react to a change that is that we can fire a function every time we change this value let's see let's come here to our recurring task class and let me delete this from here because what we're going to do is that instead of using the iOptions monitor repeatedly what we're going to do is that we're going to store the notification as a field so we're going to store the notification as a field so notifications here and we're going to set it here so let me say notifications equal to options monitor current value and that means that we only use this current value once which means that our application will be more performant because we're going to store this value here so let me put actually this in lowercase because it is a field and not a property and then in order to react to a change using the iOptions monitor we use the onChange function so let me say here options monitor onChange we're going to pass here the new notifications and something that i like to do is that i like to say if new notifications dot notification type is different than the current value then only then if they are different is that we're going to fire our custom function and that custom function or functionality is going to be a simple console log the notification type has been updated to new notifications dot notification type excellent and then after that of course we have to update our field so let me say here notifications equal to new notifications all right and this should be good 
We are good to go. Control F5 one more time. And let's see that now. Yes, indeed, we always get the latest value. As you can see here, we have email. But if I change the value, we are also going to fire this custom functionality that we have here. This could, for example, notify us about that change, maybe send us an email, maybe store something in the database or whatever. Let's see, let's come here. Let me change this back to SMS, save. Let's come here and indeed we're going to see that we have the notification type has been updated to SMS and then we have the notification type is SMS repeatedly every five seconds, which means that indeed in this video, we learn how to apply the options pattern in SP.NET Core. And we have three choices. We have I options, I options snapshot and I options monitor. And we learn how to use these three options and their differences. Thank you.